Nuzlocks have the power to take a Pokemon you've never noticed before and turn it into one of your absolute favorites. Like with me in today's subject, Solrock. Anytime this happens, I can't help but wonder if I was just missing out on a universally loved Pokemon and it took a Nuzlocke for me to notice. Let's see what the rest of the community thinks. That shit is fucking trash, dog! Who said that? Who the fuck said that? Who's the slimy little commoner shit twinkle toad cocksucker down here who just signed his own death warrant? After you complete your second or third Nuzlocke, you should start to realize that every Pokemon has something to offer. Even the weird ones with gimmicks like Cast Form or Smeargle are useful if you know what you're doing. This isn't competitive, don't let anyone tell you you're playing the game wrong. If videos like these can exist, then trust me when I say that this shit is about as reliable as your average politician. That's a nice argument, Senator. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is that I made it the fuck up. So imagine how I feel when I see team members that have carried my team or saved my runs disrespected on some jobber's tier list. I don't like this thing, but I like that thing. I like that thing. What the fuck? I like that thing! That's the whole point of the series. Everybody knows about the one percenters that cash in on their huge base stats, or busted abilities, or plentiful move pools. But I'm just trying to highlight the underappreciated Pokemon that are out here just trying to pay rent. You'll get your rent when you- Give me a new damn ability. For this story, we're gonna jump ahead to year two of my Nuzlocke experience. I'd completed a Nuzlocke in one game from every generation released up to that point. Except one. One game was giving me trouble. When I started Nuzlocking, I was led to believe that Platinum was the hardest. So that was a fucking lie. I don't know if it was my inexperience, or bad luck, or maybe just a general lack of skill when I first played Emerald, but I was never able to beat it. So I knew that if I ever wanted to do a second run through every generation, I would need to finish what I started. So let me start off this recap by saying I have a love-hate relationship with Gen 3. I love the first 78% of the game, but then the water comes and it doesn't stop. The Hoenn region feels so cramped compared to the others. Also, it doesn't help that many other routes have the exact same encounters. I feel like I wouldn't have this problem if Hoenn had like two more grass routes. Probably on Moss Deep, so it felt more like an island instead of just a rock. But once you set foot off a of Lily Cove, you're in for nothing but cave and water encounters. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire fixed this issue by adding garage spots when flying, but if you want a traditional Gen 3 experience without the newer Pokemon, you gotta play Ruby, Sapphire, or Emerald. With all that said, for all of us that started with Gen 1, Christ, there's a boomer around here. Hoenn was the first region that actually felt alive. Before Gen 3, the two regions we had felt very empty and the same. What do you mean there's only planes? It means there's only planes. Well then get out of this Kanto region. All right, you don't have to shout at me. There's more planes. What do you mean there's more planes? There's just more planes. Going to the next aisle. There's still planes. Where are you right now? Obviously, there were some technical limitations, but would it have been so hard to add one more biome to the mix? More! Originally, Kanto and Johto had towns, plains, forests, caves, a mountain, some islands, and water. That's it. I'm not shitting on those regions, I mean Johto is still my personal favorite. But then Hoenn drops and suddenly we have volcanoes, ancient buildings, underwater, a real fucking beach, a town built out of rafts, a town built out of trees, a desert, a second mountain, and one of the coolest areas in the entire series. I mean seriously, if you didn't have your secret base here, what the fuck were you even doing? It's just a shame that with all these cool places to explore, they still made half the map just the ocean. So how is this run of Emerald going to be any different? How was I going to prepare for all the run enders? Brawly can kill some team members if you're not prepared. Watson's the first real difficulty spike. If you have all males on your team, Flannery's a nightmare. Slacking exists. Winona's fucking cursed. Tate and Liza straight up jump you. Juan's Kingdra spans double team. And the run can end anywhere in the Pokemon League from Glacia to Wallace. Shit, I don't know, Chlorophyll will figure it out. Things start off slow, as you expect, but I receive my first bit of luck catching Shroomish I named Doom Shroom in the Petalburg Woods. If I can keep her alive long enough to become a Breloom, Watson's done. In Granite Cave, I'm fortunate enough to get Saul to Sableye. He's great for two run-enders. Next, I catch my own female Torkoal named Colleen to help with Flannery and Norman. Things are really starting to fall into place. This might be the run where it all comes together. I was wrong! I was so very wrong! In my hubris, I did the one thing you should never do while nuzlocking. Go into a battle without a backup plan. I need a new plan like right fucking now. I was so confident in my cursed Oracle strategy that it never crossed my mind that the Fire Gym would be using special attacks. My plan was working fine until Flannery's Torkoal hit a sunny day boosted overheat, killing Colleen. Tonight I dine on turtle soup. At this point I started to fucking <laughs> panic. My team consisted of two grass types, a ghost dark type, a poison type, a now dead fire type, and a newly caught basically untrained psychic rock. Things were not looking great. 
Torgal's White Herb just reset its special attack drop from Overheap, so I wasn't sure who could take the hit at this point. The Grass types were out of the question, Sol is too frail, the sun is still up, and I have a snake and a rock! I figured my only chance was to send in Lucy and try and paralyze it with Glare. If you saw my last Nuzlocke video, you'll remember the part where I mentioned any move with less than 100% accuracy is basically garbage. Listen to me when I say you should never, ever, make a game plan revolving around a move with 75% accuracy. But there was a chance, so I sent out Lucy and went for Glare. And sure enough, it fucking missed. How do you even miss glaring at someone? Did you fucking blink? Oh great, now you're dead too. So after taking a moment to recollect myself, I had to think of another strategy. Even with the special attack drop, I was still afraid to lose Saul. He was my win con for Norman. So I wanted to check the summaries to see if Saul had more special defense than Lucy, but I accidentally sent him out instead. Quick side note, why the fuck is summary on top of the menu outside of battle, but then in battle it's shift. I have never been so upset at a quality of life feature. I didn't want to lose Saul, so I sent in Lars the Soul Rock to lower Torkoal's special attack after another overheat. But it turns out, Torkoal's have a thing for Sableyes because she went for Attract. And if you didn't know, Attract doesn't work on genderless Pokemon like Soul Rock. BE GONE, SUCK! New game plan, Lars, buddy, I'm gonna need you to confuse that Torkoal. I'm kinda confused. Lars, use Rock Throw. Torkoal breaks through confusion, but since the sun dissipated last turn, the dumb, dumb bitch, bitch goes for sunny day. Keep rock throwing. Torkoal snaps out of confusion and lands an overheat, but your special attack's minus two. Didn't even feel it. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Lars, let's wrap it up. And just like that, a new favorite child was born. Bye -bye. I added some new team members after realizing we didn't cover enough types, then went and took on Norman, using Lars to take down the first three team members and Saul to clean up the slacking. Next up was Winona, the notorious run-ender. The fuck you say to me, you little shit! With that hurdle out of the way, I was starting to feel invincible. I hadn't lost anybody since Flannery. The only issue was, for some reason, I was having some trouble catching encounters. Oh, uh, fuck. Tate and Liza were up next. You have to hit them hard and fast if you want to win. And wouldn't you know it, Lars and Saul very easily took that badge. After easily thwarting Team Aqua and Magma's stupid plans, we finally reached Juan at the final gym. I thought I had it in the bag with Chlorophyll, but Kingdra had other plans. Ice Beam? Shit, I forgot you had that. Uh. Well, to summarize how the next few turns went... You're gonna have to get out of here. I'm telling you to get out of here. At this point, every option I had left was weak to Kingdra. But Lars only had a 2 times weakness, while the other two had a 4 times weakness. And now I was really wishing I had taught Lars Calm Mind before this battle, but I didn't think it would come to this, so he only had Cosmic Power. I boosted my defenses twice while Kingdra went for Rest. Not sure why he didn't go for Water Pulse, but I wasn't complaining. I went for Rock Slide and... Wait, why did we just go first that time? Holy shit, we have a speed tie! Looks like killing all those Swellows on Route 115 came in handy. For those of you who don't know, if two Pokemon have the exact same speed stat, the game essentially flips a coin to see which Pokemon goes first. So now that there was a chance to go first, Rock Slide flinches were a possibility. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boy. And I would love to tell you that Lars clutched it out again, but it just wasn't meant to be this time. Kingdra won the speed tie, woke up, and landed a crit water pulse killing Lars. I was distraught over the loss of my favorite team ever. Not only that, but this isn't even the Pokemon League and I'm down four key players. But thankfully Lars did enough damage for Cotton Eye Joe the Altario to come in and finish the fight. After the battle I had to rebuild my team again from the box. Doomshroom came out of retirement and I added Leon the Kecleon and Bad Ombre the Ludicolo to the team. At that point I wasn't sure who the last team member would be. The Pokemon I had left in the box were either more water and grass types or not great matchups for the league. Oh brother, this guy stinks! I told myself to think about it while I went and got the Dragon Claw TM for Cotton Eye Joe in Meteor Falls. I entered the back room and I jokingly said to myself, Oh man, I sure hope a shiny Bagon doesn't show up to join the team. That'd be terrible. Even though I'd already caught a Pokemon in Meteor Falls, I was playing with the shiny claws. Wait, who did I catch in here again? It's been so long since I've been back here, I forgot. Welcome back to the team, Ghost Lars. Lars came back from the fucking grave to help me finish that run. You look me in the eye and tell me Soul Rock's bottom tier. With the team set, we took on the Pokemon League. And while there were some losses along the way, the Ghost of Lars and what remained of the team came together and took down Wallace. We had finally beat the Emerald Nuzlocke. And I couldn't have done it without the help 
of a bottom tier Pokemon. Sure.